This is a fruge. Its name is derived from the word frugivore, and my goal was to give them life. This all started in December of 2023 when I decided to enter the Big Mode Game Jam, hosted by Video Game Donkey. I had a little over two weeks to assemble a team of developers and somehow make a game. A game that would impress the judges and the man himself. My favorite part of making a game by far is the idea phase. I love brainstorming and coming up with wacky concepts and dreaming about what could be. There's a prevailing myth out there that freedom begets creativity, but I found that the opposite is true. Limits and constraint is what forces you to get creative. The cool thing about game jams is that they usually have a theme you must follow that isn't revealed until the jam time actually starts. This helps ensure people aren't just submitting an old project that they built outside of the game jam timeframe. This jam's theme was Mode. My team eventually landed upon an animal ranching type game. A game where you must feed and care for a group of animals, namely the Fruges. The basic idea was that a player would go around the map and collect fruit. They would feed the fruit to the Fruges. And even as the jam wore on, I never seemed to run out of ideas. I put my favorite ones in a sketchbook. But as with all game jams, time was a major constraint, and it was really about what was actually feasible to create within the time limit. So a lot of ideas had to be cut. I believe that game jams are the perfect opportunity to try something new, and I had never actually done proper NPC AI before, and thus began the research phase. I scoured the web for information on different types of AI. Machine learning is the hot new thing. It's what built technologies like Stable Diffusion and ChatGBT. But Godot doesn't really have the libraries for it, and it seemed like far too complex a solution for the Fruges. No, I was going to have to use something simpler and easier to understand. I toyed around with the idea of using behavior trees and finite state machines, and these frameworks certainly have their strengths, but I felt like I was fighting the code rather than actually making the game. So, in my infinite wisdom, I decided to roll my own solution. I spent the next two weeks in a manic state of furiously writing and rewriting game scripts, cursing the programming gods and just generally questioning my life choices. You know, programming. To add to the stress, I was also responsible for managing the development of the game as a whole. This was a team effort, and I also had to make sure my teammates were making progress on their parts. Eventually we were running out of time, and it felt like nothing was coming together. There were some major bugs still in the game, but the game was technically playable. I had spent so much time working on base systems that by the time we were nearing the end, some major design problems started becoming apparent. A new player picking up the game for the first time wouldn't necessarily understand how to play or know what to do. I only had a few hours left, and I made the executive decision to haphazardly throw together a tutorial. Just because a player can play a game doesn't mean they will necessarily know how. In the end, I think it was the right call. So what can we learn from all this? I wish I had spent more time simply playing the game. I would have caught these problems way earlier and maybe actually had a chance to fix them. But if there's any parting words I can leave you with, it's this. No amount of watching game dev tutorials and theory crafting is substitute for actually jumping in and getting your hands dirty. If you want to make games, you must make games. If you want to play the game, I will link it down in the description. Otherwise, like the video, subscribe and all that. Thanks for watching.